Hello, happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from windingroadcrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a very easy velvet pillow. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go ahead and jump right in. We are going to need just a few items. We're going to need scissors, a size H or five millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle, three buttons. These buttons are an inch and a quarter wide. And of course you're going to need some velvet yarn. And during this pattern, I'm going to give you some tips for working with velvet yarn. And the first tip is going to be using a smaller hook than it recommends. Velvet yarn really likes to snag and it's hard to fix those snags once they happen. So working with a smaller hook is really going to make your job a lot easier. So we are using about two size smaller hook for this yarn. The other thing you will need is an 18 inch pillow form or an 18 inch pillow in order to put this around. But if you check out the written patterns, I also have written instructions for a 16 inch pillow and a bolster pillow for your bed. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna make a slip knot and we're gonna insert our hook. Make sure you left enough yarn at the end of the slip knot so that we can weave it in later. And now we're simply going to chain 56. Again, this is for the 18 inch pillow and this will work best if you check your gauge and make sure that your gauge is correct. Once you've chained 56, we are going to half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So I'll yarn over, go into that second chain pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on my hook. Now I'm going to repeat this. A next tip for working with velvet yarn is it's really hard to see the stitches you're working with. So as much as possible, try to feel them with your fingertips. This is easier for a slightly more advanced crocheter, but even a beginner that's paying close attention can do this as well. So you can see I'm rubbing my fingertips along the chain, finding where the next chains are. Once you've worked all the way down your chain, we are going to turn our chain so that we can work along the other side of the chain. So this project is worked in joined rounds. So we're gonna turn it and again, feeling where our chains are. I'm just going to make a half double crochet, find that first chain here, and work into the opposite side of the chain. The first and second stitch is a little difficult, but after that it gets quite easy. And just continue half double crocheting in the opposite side of each chain all the way back to the beginning. You should have a total of 110 stitches. When you get back to the beginning, where we're next to our first stitch, we're just going to slip stitch to the very first half double crochet. So we will be working in joined rounds. From here, we can chain one and turn our work. This is where the job gets a little trickier. In order to know where your stitch is, you really want to feel for the two horizontal bars that are on the back side of a half double crochet. So first I'm going to skip my slip stitch because this first what looks like a stitch is actually our slip stitch and then I'm going to go in between those two horizontal bars to create my new half double crochet. I know this is difficult to see on velvet yarn so I'm going to show you this on a regular yarn as well. But at this point, all you're going to do is work a half double crochet into every stitch all the way around. So here is an example worked with a different type of yarn. You can see how we've worked row one into both sides of the chain. We're gonna chain one and start row two. Again, this first stitch here is actually the slip stitch, so we're going to skip that. We'll yarn over and you want to insert your hook in between these two horizontal bars. So going in between those, pull up your loop, half double crochet. 
On the velvet yarn, it's kind of hard to see these horizontal bars, but it's not that hard to feel them with your fingers. So I hope that gives you a little better visual on what you're looking for when you're working your stitches in the velvet yarn. So we'll look at the velvet yarn one more time. I'm just feeling for those horizontal bars and going in between the two horizontal bars to work my half double crochet stitches. And I'll work half double crochets all the way around this row. When you reach the very end of the row, I'm just working my last half double crochet, it's actually quite hard to see where your first stitch is. So I'm going to find it and I'm going to make a slip stitch in the first stitch. Yes, I do think that's where it is. And then I'm going to begin the next row. So I will chain one and turn. And this time when I make my first stitch, I am going to mark it with a stitch marker. That way we don't accidentally skip it and start working in continuous rounds. So now for row two through row 45, we're just going to repeat the same row. Chain one, turn, half double crochet in 110 stitches, and then slip stitch to the very first stitch. So here I have my 45 rows and you can see how beautiful and luxurious this pillow is. Now our next row, we're gonna be working buttonholes into the row so that we can go ahead and button this close, making this cover removable. We're going to chain one and turn. We are just going to start by half double crocheting into the first 13 stitches. So I'm working into my first stitch and as I've been doing for every row, I'm going to add that stitch marker. And then I've worked one stitch, so I'm going to work a total of 13 half double crochets to start this row. Once I've worked 13 stitches, I'll create my first buttonhole. I'm going to chain one, I'm going to skip a stitch, and I'm going to half double crochet into the following stitch. And that will create a buttonhole. You do want to make sure that your button will fit through the buttonhole. It's okay if it's a little bit tight, we don't want it coming off easily. Now we're going to repeat the process two more times. So I've already worked one half double crochet. I want to work a total of 13 half double crochet before I create my next buttonhole. So again, I've worked 13 stitches. I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the next stitch. So we've created buttonhole number two. And again, just another 13 half double crochet. After 13, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the next stitch. Now we are going to half double crochet until the end of the row. This should be a total of 68 stitches. When you make it to the end of the row, you will just slip stitch to the very first half double crochet. For our next row, we are going to chain one and turn. We only have two rows left. This row is similar to all our other rows. We're just going to half double crochet in every stitch as well as every chain one space all the way around. So you'll start with 68 half double crochets in two stitches. When you get there, make sure to work into the half double crochet directly in front of the chain one space. You can feel it with your fingers work a half double crochet into the chain one space, and then just work a half double crochet into the next 13 stitches. Remember that our chain spaces are separated by 13 stitches. When you reach the next chain one space, again, work into the stitch before the chain one space. It's a little harder to see. And then work a half double crochet into the chain one space. Repeat this for all the stitches to the end of the row, including the last chain one space. At the end of this row, you should still have 110 stitches. When you reach the very end of the row, 
As we've been doing, you're going to slip stitch to the very first half double crochet. Now we're ready for our very last row and it's going to be exactly the same as all of our repeat rows in the middle of our pillow. We are just going to chain one, turn our work, half double crochet into 110 stitches or all the way around. When we reach the end of the row, we are going to slip stitch to the very first stitch. We are going to fasten off our yarn, leaving enough of a yarn end to be able to weave in our ends. Just yarn over and pull through the very last loop to fasten off. Now we're just going to take our yarn needle, I'm just going to fold it over my needle and then carefully push it through. I'm using a very wide hold needle on this and I'm just going to weave my yarn end end. Now assuming I am going to wash this, I like to weave it back and forth at least three times. Weaving back and forth three times is going to make sure that your yarn end does not come undone when washed. So I'm just going to clip my yarn end. I will do it the same way with all the yarn ends that I have. And now we're going to sew on our buttons. You're going to want to lay your pillow flat and just make sure that that center buttonhole is in the center of the pillow. Take your button, lay it on the inside of the pillow, and line it right up with your buttonhole. These are sewn on the inside of the pillow cover. I'm going to take a smaller yarn needle that I know will fit through the holes in my button and a small piece of velvet yarn, and I'm just going to sew up and down through this once. So I'm going to take these two back yarn ends and I'm going to knot them together two to three times so that they are secure. And then I'll just weave in those ends. And then you just have to slip in your pillow cover once all your buttons are on your pillow. Slip in your pillow form or your already existing pillow. Button this around your pillow and your project is complete. So I really hope you like this video tutorial. This is a really simple but super luxurious pillow and it's one that my kids have been fighting over. And as always, thank you so much for watching.